we, we've been in a, a very interesting phase in the last year of, of reshaping the Moodle project somewhat, and uh, it's all based on this. We nailed the, the mission, our mission, as empowering educators to improve our world. It's funny with missions, as you boil them down, they start sounding pat, um, but they, this one, every, every word in there has meaning, and I want to go through that. Our vision, and what we want to do immediately, is to build the world's most effective platform for learning. And that's not just an LMS. It's a whole platform for learning, and there's a lot of pieces in that. So why? Why is that the mission? Well, we're doing pretty well with uh, some things in this world. Uh, poverty's down to only 10% of the world's in poverty. Only four of us out of a hundred are dying uh, before the age of five. Uh, our, only 14% um, have no education at all. We're not talking about inequality here, just you know, basic literacy. And about half the world has some say over how they're governed, which I think most people would agree would be a good idea, um, whether or not the way democracy works is a good idea. I'm sure we can have terrific arguments at the party on Wednesday night. What we're aligning ourselves under as a project, uh, uh, the UN is the closest thing we have to a science fiction world government where we all spend credits uh, on buying things, which I always wished we had, reading science fiction growing up. Um, but the UN spent a lot of effort coming up with 17 goals for sustainability. This is not what we need to make the world a super fun place. This is what we need to make the world livable. Um, and uh, they're a pretty good set of goals. We fit in there in number four, quality education. But there are lots of other problems. There's inequality, massive inequality, and it's growing in most places, though strangely not in Japan. So we need to go to Japan more and see what they're doing. Climate change is something that's easy to forget uh, but is happening on a scale that we can't normally comprehend as an individual human being, but there are trends, and this is super serious. That is causing food and water security, as well as a whole lot of dodgy politics. And there are a lot of places, if you look at the, um, the like, for example, the Syrian situation and the refugees, a lot of that's caused by droughts causing food problems, causing people moving, causing people who don't live together very well, having to be in the same space, causing refugees, etc, etc. 65 million people drifting around the world right now. All of us are putting our lives into these things. Look what happened last couple of weeks with Facebook and Cambridge Analytica. It's just, you know, what a lot of us have been pointing at for years. This stuff is happening in many, many other ways, quietly, and it's not on the front pages. A lot of, a lot of uh, <clears throat> people are seeking to control the internet in different ways and, and use this data in ways I don't think we all want. And we're rapidly automating jobs. We're, some people are automating teaching. Some people are automating factories and things. It's okay in some instances. I, don't, I disagree about the teaching. but. Is, are we making plans for those people who lose their jobs to make sure they still have a place in the economy and can still um, have things like healthcare quality? Um, <clears throat> this could very much be in a lot of countries, including the US. Um, healthcare, healthcare quality is something that uh, uh, is definitely patchy. Environmental damage is all around us. We are destroying this planet. And uh, slowly, slowly, but surely, uh, throwing our stuff away. There's really good trends happening lately, but we're not there yet. And all of those things need these kinds of people to solve them. It's not going to be solved overnight, and it's not going to be solved by uh, waving a wand or, or uh, a quick change in policy or a government uh, or, or making new apps necessarily. It's going to be solved by generations of people who think like this, people who are globally oriented, who are aware of different cultures and care about them, people who are environmentalists, who think about the environment. Uh, every time you go to a supermarket and you have a wide range of goods there, 
and you look at the labels and they're coming from all around the world and they're all wrapped in plastics and all that stuff, um, you, you're not really aware of the impact a single meal can have um, going back into all the supply chain. And we need to be caring people, people who actually give a crap. And we need to be citizens. We need to be people who, if you see a problem, you think, okay, I can do something about that. I'll get involved. I'll start a group. I'll be, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll become, I'll get myself elected. I'll start a company. I'll do something, but like be involved somehow. And if we need a generation of that kind of people, and I believe we do, to fix all the problems, then we've got to focus on this. And I'm talking to the choir here, but uh, education is really what's going to fix things for me. I think everything comes down to that. And that's probably why a lot of you are in this business. I call it a business because you're all very busy, I hope. So... That's why we have our mission. The purpose of us making software and tools and stuff is to help educators have more power to educate, to improve our world. So hopefully educate people in the right directions. And these are our values. Education, we value education in every instance. This is an education week. Openness. We try and be open as far as possible with everything. We believe in respect, respecting other products, everything around us as much as we can, it being in, having integrity, uh, so living the way we talk, and uh, innovation, breeding innovation, allowing innovation, letting people around us innovate. And uh, that's what's guiding Moodle HQ. Now, we came up with these and refined them down from previous stuff, like last year. But we're at a real inflection point as a project because to do these things, the Moodle project needed a lot more resources. And I spent a couple of years, frankly, uh, talking with money people uh, to try and see what we could do and uh, exploring that issue. And I must have talked to 50 or so like investors, potential investors. And pretty soon they would get into, well, you know, are we going to get 10.53% in two and a half years? On the, you know, and it starts becoming that discussion. And it's like, well, no, you're not really getting it, right? Um, so I rejected a lot. But um, if, if we need to, if, if we want to support these people around the world... We had to do it. So I kept going, I kept going, I kept looking, kept trying to solve this problem. And um, here's some interesting statistics. Andorra is the biggest Moodle-using country in the world. With this responsibility to improve, uh, I, I kept on looking. And we finally did find somebody. I was actually in Israel... Uh, Nadav is here from Israel. Anyone else here from Israel by any chance? No. Oh, hello. So uh, uh, I was at a conference there. It was called, what was it called? Uh, Shaping the Future. Shaping the Future. It was like 2,000 people at the, in the audience. And I had a, I don't know, 20, 30 minute chance to speak to them. And I didn't even really talk about Moodle. I had a full on, a full -on rant about public education. <laughs> And the funny thing was, all the audience was teachers, were, were educators, and all of the other talks were generally uh, startups who were talking about their new app or, you know, teachers can't do the job, we need to replace them with technology. And you can imagine everyone's going, what? It's uh, not, a, not a friendly <laughs> room to them. And I came on and sort of said, hey, it's about us and teachers and educators, we're the only ones who can do this. And... There was a lot of other stuff. And in the audience was, uh, were these guys. And so you probably heard, or if you haven't, about last September, Moodle had its very first ever outside investment. Um, now, they got a very small percentage of, the, of the, the, the main company of Moodle, but what we really gained was obviously some immediate money that helps us do things straight away but we gained a big brother like a friend who's helping this project now these people really believe in what we're doing 
They really want to support it. They're going to be here for the next 20 years or so. They weren't interested in exits. They're not interested in, you know, little percentages of, uh, of things. Um, they really believe in the mission. And they're backing us. And this is a tremendous thing for an open source project. Uh, when I describe the kind of conditions this happened to people, they go, that never happens um, very often. And um, uh, we, we are in this very good situation. So education for the many is the is uh, part of the, the family group that owns Decathlon, the sports stores. And you might go, well, sports stores, it's not a big relation to education. But actually, their mission, you know, ours is about empowering educators to improve our world. Theirs is about uh, making everybody as healthy as possible. They're doing the same thing in the health area. Their whole, their whole mission is to produce tools for people to make themselves fit and healthy uh, at the lowest possible prices. And they have, they have weird things in there that weird for most companies, uh, weird things in their strategy, like we, we shall not ever have more than X percent profits, very small percentage of profit. So as soon as they are able to spend less, they drop their prices. And, uh, and that's to kind of spread the, when they do research on things, they spread it as much as they can. They also have a really interesting culture in their company. That company is 90,000 people. And so when they're sitting and talking with me every month about things, I have all this experience and a, a really interesting advice on how to run larger organizations. So that's really helping us. So I am so excited right now. I'm having such a good uh, time. We are really shifting how we're doing things. And the last uh, months or so, uh, has been, okay, now we've got this chance, what do we do with it? And I know in the past, I've st stood in front of Moodle Moots and had keynotes and talked about things we want to work on, and I, let's be honest, a percentage of them get happen. If you look back, we, we have achieved quite a lot in the last 10, 15 years, but a percentage of them don't happen. And they don't happen because we just never had enough resources to really push them, or they're happening very, very slowly. It's time to actually make these things happen. So, last February, we had a uh, team leads meeting of all the teams in Moodle HQ. Uh, to, can't, they came to Perth, or uh, just outside of Perth. We got everyone away from their families for uh, four or five days. Uh, we did a lot of brainstorming, and we got a lot of work done. So, here's all the, the team leads at Moodle HQ. And... Uh, so we got uh, Rowan's there on the left, the CFO. We've got Sandra Bangma, who's the open source lead. We've got Doug Belshaw, who's sitting right here. You already met. We've got Gavin. That's Pierre. So Pierre works for this family in uh, the, the French family. Uh, we've got Holly, a people and culture person, and Petra, our uh, head of comms. And Steve Watt, who's a, a friend of ours, is he's speaking on Wednesday. Um, as an, ad, he's advising and helping there. We've got myself and we've got Chris Reed, who's the Moodle Cloud guy, and Tom Murdoch, who started Moodle Rooms a long time ago. And if you've been on the Moodle forums any time in the last 15 years, you'll know Tom Murdoch. Runs the education team. And we came up with eight goals. And the eight goals are the framework under which we're organizing our projects and what we do and we're, we're getting to the point where we can have a strong framework that if, if things are happening and they don't fit, we can say, we're not doing that. We're, fo we're not focusing on that right now. We just want to focus on these goals. And it's not just us as a company. We're, we're setting things up so the whole community, I hope, can gather around under these goals and, and join with us. So number one, improving the quality of teaching practice. Uh, that's me in a school in India uh, a few months back. Uh, a really cool little school out in the, out in the sticks, far away from the city. Uh, a lot of people living in uh, houses made of uh, sticks and mud. Um, and a couple there have built an amazing school, and it's all open source powered. They use Moodle uh, as their learning management system, They just internally, locally. Uh, they do incredible things, actually. It's really, really very cool. 
there were some stats from a few years back about quality or about people uh, and their skills was that 74% of faculty in this survey, they say an LMS is useful and 60% said it was critical. 57% of them said they'd be more effective if they were better skilled at their LMS and 51% said they were dissatisfied with initial and ongoing LMS training efforts. So that's quite a large percentage of people who feel that they want to use this tool but they're not very good at it and that they're not getting the training they need. They're not, they're not learning how to use it very well. So this leads to our first big project, which we've been talking about now for about a year. It's coming close to being a more, much more public. And was anybody here involved in some of the early prototypes that were, happened in January, February? We had some initial runs. No one. Um, what we're building is a complete curriculum to learn to teach online. Obviously, Moodle is the tool we use, but it's pretty generic. It's about how to actually really use Moodle in a quality way. We're building it to be worldwide and multilingual. Um, you can, it'll be in multiple modes, so you could take some of these things online or you could take them in workshops. Um, there's a certification infrastructure behind it, so you can work towards certifications, which can go in your, pro in your profile. And we're looking for accreditation in various parts of the world, so these can be used t as credit towards uh, university level courses. It's aligned under a number of frameworks. One of them is this one, the European Framework for Digital Competence of Educators, uh, which is from the European Commission. There's uh, 22, uh, what would you call them, Mary? What do you call? Yeah, competencies, which uh, we've, we've, we've aligned this system under those. It's also connected to some other uh, frameworks like the UNESCO Four Pillars of Learning uh, and basically as many things as we can align them to because we want it to be something that's uh, very connected with those initiatives but also seen as valuable. You get certifications that mean something and frankly a lot of people have put effort into these frameworks that, um, that, that cover things. So you can see even just looking at those, so hopefully you can read some of that, um, things like collaborative learning, which there's going to be a workshop on Wednesday with Mary about. Um, things like uh, reflective practice, things like analysing evidence, um, responsible use. These are not just how to use Moodle tools, click, 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 button, check box. These are the pedagogy, how the thinking behind it, how to teach online in 2018. So tomorrow afternoon, four o'clock, uh, is a session intro to learn Moodle with Mary Cooch, who's sitting here in the almost orange pants. Good branding. Yeah, good job. And, uh, and then again on uh, Wednesday, there's a co she's collaborative learning workshop, which is one of those modules. So you can get a bit of an example and an experience of what that's like. It's not released yet. Uh, it will be. We are still building it. And uh, we're going to be working with the partners next uh, to work with them, to refine it and see how it dovetails with their training. Um, and then it should be a bit later in the year, it'll be more available for wider, uh, wider use. Uh, how can we measure, and this is a question, open question to you all, because I don't have the answer to this. I would love the answer to this. How can we measure Moodle's effect on the quality of teaching? We need to work this out, I think, I know, because I, would, I want to show to ourselves and to the world that Moodle is affecting the quality of teaching. This is the number four goal on the UN goal. If we aren't doing that, we're not doing our job. We need to not only do it, we need to show we're doing it and measure it. So I would love everybody to just brainstorm this question this next three days, keep it in the back of your mind and if any projects come up, anything, initiatives you know about are happening, please let me know. We're all working on this, we've got some ideas but I think we can all uh, work on this together. Okay, I'm going to move a bit faster now. Uh, number two, uh, we want to improve our reach worldwide. I already showed that world map 
Moodle is in every country. But just because some sites have it, or schools or universities have it, doesn't mean it's really there um, uh, as much as it could be. So there's a couple of initiatives we're doing. This year, we're launching a Moodle Foundation. And I've been planning this for some years, actually. But we're, we're going to have it this year. Uh, it's a non-profit, a separate organization. It's going to be based here in Europe, uh, probably in Brussels, where you can have lunches with lots of uh, um, movers and shakers. And it's focused on research driving open source and how Moodle can be involved in that. So we're looking for funding opportunities and developing them, being involved in those larger grants and projects that are going on between universities and, uh, and research and companies. Um, looking to be integrated with other open initiatives, so open education resource projects, uh, uh, all sorts of open projects. And stimulating research. We want to have the, f the foundation even having some scholarships. I'd love to see a Moodle scholarship for PhD students for, or something. So these are the kinds of things. We've got some good people who are going to be in this, uh, who are already in this space. So we're not starting from scratch. Um, but we need it to be something that, that... So Moodle's got a voice in these things. In the last 10 years, there has been millions and millions of pounds put into e-learning-related projects that use Moodle. And you can guess how much has come back to the Moodle source code, the Moodle core project? It's almost nothing. I can, <laughs> almost nothing at all. These things usually go to for staff at, at a university, and it's fine. Um, but if if we if those projects develop source code, develop software or tools or anything, um, and at the end of the three years when the funding runs out, just gets thrown away, what a waste! Why, we're wasting this money. We have to be more coordinated. We have to try and channel this stuff into the tool that we're all using. So that's why we're doing that. Also, we're looking at more NGO partnerships and being more proactive there. Um, that's me in the Security Council building, just planning a war. And uh, at the UN, um, Later this week, uh, we're at the UNESCO Mobile Learning Week in Paris. There's uh, three of us there uh, presenting. And um, uh, you'll hear about Save the Children later this week, World Vision, other NGOs. This is we, Part of our direction is being involved with these organisations who are doing great things, often with Moodle already, um, but actually working with them on those things. Number three, uh, we want our company to be a great place to work. Like any place to work, uh, it involves people somewhat, and people, we're ornery, we're ornery, aren't we? Um, so uh, there's always improvements to make, and internally we are uh, uh, growing quite rapidly, so we really want to get this right. We want new people who join us to be joining a great place to work and making it an even greater place to work. So we're doing a lot of introspective thinking about how we do things internally, how we're structured, how does... Uh, an organization work in 2018 with all the technology that we have around us. We're building up our office in Barcelona. The Barcelona office is already eight people, nine people. It will grow further. We'll have an actual office there. You can go and visit um, uh, or paint it orange uh, very soon. And uh, that's going to be growing uh, uh, rapidly. So that will eventually, by next year, I, I hope, or the year after, be the same size as the Perth office. Um, we also have people scattered around the world in other places. But Europe is really where the action is, in my mind. This is where Moodle needs to be. We need to be more involved here. I will be moving myself to Barcelona in a year or two, as soon as my kids are a bit older. Um, I'm actually, last six months or so, I've been in Europe more than I've been in Perth already. I'm just traveling so much. So, uh, we are really doing that. We want our culture inside the organization to be really based on the values, for that to be part of the DNA. One thing we're doing is to measure how great a place of work it is by submitting ourselves to this process the great place to work process. 
which is a lot of surveying of people and a lot of uh, alignment of things. And uh, we'll be working to make that get better and better every year. And we have some targets that we want to hit. So if you want to talk about that goal, grab anyone from Moodle HQ anytime, because we're all here. There's about, uh, how many of us are here, actually? Is uh, Georgie around? How many of you? Where's Georgie? Are you here? She's busy. Uh, so Georgie's our new event coordinator, who joined like one or two weeks ago. And I said, come to England, or come to Glasgow. Sorry, very sorry. <coughs> Come to Glasgow and, and, you know, see what a moot is because you're going to be running a lot of them. Uh, so she's around. Uh, I think that there's maybe eight, nine of us, ten, something like that. A lot of us Moodle HQ people, so just grab us anytime. Number four, uh, we, are, we really want to maximize connections in our community. That's the strength of any project. It's... Really, the, it's what makes being alive way more fun. And um, uh, Moodle has always had a strong community. A lot of people would say Moodle has a, a big and strong community. <clears throat> Largely because in the beginning, a uh, good oh, 15 or 16 years ago, I made Moodle our platform for the community. And I very deliberately put all the developers and the users in the same forums. Um, and people were often suggesting, oh, can the developers have separate places so we don't have to deal with users? And the users are like, we want more support. Uh, I said, no, you're all going to be in one place. Uh, and I think it's been a, a, one of the factors that led to a stronger community, that we had these conversations. Moodle is very much in the middle between the technical and the pedagogical, uh, and that's where all the interesting stuff happens. <clears throat> uh, we also have the Moodle Users Association as an organization that uh, is very specifically gathering the community to fund and decide on new roadmap developments. Not all of them, but as many as they can. And that's been going quite well for the past uh, couple of years. Anybody here a Moodle user? Uh, are you a Moodle Users Association member? Well, you are, you are, you are, okay. Um, it's, uh, that's growing and developing as well. Uh, and the other thing we have is a lot of Moodle moots. <clears throat> we have 20 or 30 major conferences around the world, at different places, different times. Um, they varying sizes. Uh, Moodle HQ, we run some of them. Some of them are run by community members. And um, uh, this is a very cool thing about this project, that we have these, and we, we really want to uh, grow them and improve them. But the, those, that's what we've had up till now. A lot of the community going forward is going to be under MoodleNet. And this is a chance to rethink what we are doing online uh, with our community. And eventually, I wanted to replace the Moodle.org forums because I don't think Moodle is such a good place in 2018, it's such a good tool for this kind of interaction. Uh, Moodle's very focused on being an education space for institutions, for higher ed, for workplace, for schools. Uh, to make it a place that now has two million accounts on it, um, to, to make it that tool that, that really works like things should work now, it's, it's, not, it's too much work to change Moodle to be that, and we shouldn't waste time on that. We've got a, time to, we've got a chance to build something from scratch here. It should be something that's um, integrated with all the Moodle sites. So when you have a Moodle site, you see MoodleNet and you can jump into it. And it should support creating and sharing of content and services. And it should really be on this thing first. So uh, some of the things that you'd see in there is uh, you would see uh, profiles, you would see public conversations, you see a lot of resources going on, uh, open resources and maybe others. Uh, you'd see a lot of initiatives for the community to think through things and more and more. And another thing that's not on here that we really should be seeing is that it becomes a place for this conference, you would have been in MoodleNet, seen there's a conference coming up and hit a button and register and get into it. 
so that the, the online community is very closely tied to the uh, face-to-face community. This is the guy running that project. He already mentioned that before, Doug Belshaw. Uh, he's leading that. Um, it's still early stages, a lot of conceptualization. Uh, that's the place to go to find out more about it, moodle.com slash moodlenet. So number five of eight goals. Um, Moodle has to be feature competitive. It has to be. Uh, we can't have the situation where it's not. So let me talk about the last couple of releases briefly and then the future. So Moodle 3.4. There was some uh, nice usability work that happened. Uh, the, the calendar got a, a facelift. You can drag and drop things. And it sounds light, sounds easy, but that's connected to all the activities in the background. Any plugin in Moodle can, can control things in the, uh, in the calendar. It supports repeating events and things like that, that that are expected. There's some improvement on the interface and all the dragging and dropping. You can grab an item and drag it up to that month, for example, and then the display flips, and then you can pop it into the next month, things like that. Uh, there was some work on the participants listing, which was a, a huge bugbear for years. Uh, it's a lot better now. Um, still improving, but... Uh, uh, the Moodle Analytics engine, Project Inspire, uh, finally hit core in 3.4. And what that is, is just a basic uh, level of functionality that we want people to build on. And so we are not going to tell everybody what analytics should be. We've just built a framework so people can build plugins to decide what analytics should be. Um, and it's any time you want... Uh, an AI to look at all the data in Moodle and give some uh, responses, some insights. That's what this is for. And there is a whole uh, area on Moodle.org for devoted to that. The mobile app uh, in 3.4, uh, also looking way better, has a lot of improvements, is really growing. Uh, the lead of that project is Juan, who's here at the front from Barcelona. Um, in Moodle 3.4, we hit 100% support for core features, which was a great big milestone. All of the core f features in Moodle for students, that you can do it on the mobile app. Which means that if, you're, if you have a Moodle site that's only using the core modules, the students never need to use anything else. They can 100% stay in the app, which is frankly where they mostly want to stay these days. Uh, we also had a, a lot of success last year with a branded Moodle mobile app uh, and people choosing that. Uh, so you can get a version of the app with your own name, uh, your own branding, a simplified login. It's in the store with your own university name and uh, it's updated every two months. It's about 2,700 pounds a year, peanuts. Um, you can get that if you come to moodle.com. And... We also released Moodle Desktop, which is a version of the app for desktops, uh, Mac, Windows, and Linux, full screen if you want, and has all the same features as the mobile app, i.e. it works offline, uh, it has a simple interface, and uh, it works really well. It can also be branded as well. Then, uh, late last year, we really started to change how the open source team works. So we hired a new guy, Sander or Sonder, no one can decide exactly how to say it, he's Dutch, um, uh, Sonder Bangma, and he is the open source coordinator for the team. We never had anybody in that role before, except for me. Uh, and it's been a while since I had the time to put a lot of effort into that. The team is quite big, we've got you know, 30 or so people to, to coordinate. And then there's all the outside stuff that we have to talk to, all the, the whole community of developers, the, the tracker, the forums, the MUA, the Moodle partners, uh, etc. So we got someone in this role. And we also uh, changed some of the way it works internally. We had big, big teams who were collectively working through the roadmap of little things they had to do, all the little jobs or well, fixing this bug in this forum, fixing this bug in the workshop, etc. 
And the thinking we used to have was that this would mean everybody can do everything, uh, that if someone goes on leave um, or falls off a skateboard, as one of our uh, developers happened to him on New Year's Eve, uh, Damien Weiss, he actually fell on his head and uh, had brain damage and it was very dicey for a couple of months, but he's okay. He's going to be back soon. He's going to be 100%, I think. Um, but we, the thinking was we wanted our team to be robust to unexpected events like that. The problem was nobody owned anything and a lot of things were not happening. If you look at the activity plugins in Moodle, they haven't really evolved super fast for a, a while. And to change that, we've changed how we're doing things. We're giving people responsibilities over particular plugins. And uh, we call them components in Moodle. It's not just plugins, it's also bits of Moodle that need looking after. And so Sonder's doing really well at looking after that. And I'm, when I say all these, when I say the open source team, it includes the, the, the Moodle PHP application, but also the mobile application and all the bits of things that glue all those together. We've got lots of tools and servers and things that make all that work. And the integrators, UX, testers, documenters, etc. So hopefully what you'll see is a more coordinated approach to things and a bit more speed. Moodle 3.5 is the one we're working on right now uh, to come out in May. The headlines are, number one, privacy features for GDPR. I wish I could have said we did it two releases ago and that you had a whole year to prepare for GDPR. Does anybody here not, is not familiar with GDPR? Are you anyone? Not? So in Europe, uh, these regulations are, uh, are landing in uh, April, May. Uh, that um, everybody who has a site with user data in it needs to be compliant with these privacy regulations. These are good regulations. They're actually forcing uh, companies to think about privacy, to deal with privacy appropriately, to tell users how their data is going to be used, uh, to uh, all of those things. Um, they are very hard to implement. Just because Moodle has tools for this, it does not mean you are, you are done. Everybody who has European students or European teachers or any European users in their site needs to be compliant. And the threat of not being compliant is 4% of gross revenue or something like that. Like it's massive fines. Um, so they've really got some teeth behind this. And even though it's super painful, it is a good thing to be doing, and everybody needs to take that plunge. Um, like I said, I wish we'd done it earlier, but it's very hard for developers to understand the urgency of this whole issue. Because, and I, I, I was thinking about it, and I think the reason is developers are used to seeing everybody's data. Yeah, yeah, you can trust me, I can read your email if I want to, it's okay. Don't worry. Like we, we got that attitude. We are the, the, the masters of these universes, and so we, we don't we we can't see the problem. What's the problem? You know, what's the problem? And that's why we have Facebook and Twitter and Google and all that. But we have to not trust ourselves, and that's hard. We have to get, put ourselves in a situation of the giving the user, um, the, making them trust us. We are all users of software too, but we run systems where we have users. So that's number one. We, were, we spent almost the whole six months of this cycle pretty much just doing that. And we're still, we're still going to be keeping going. Uh, question bank tagging from the MUA is a big feature. And, uh, Bootstrap 4 final. So anyone's doing themes, it's now Bootstrap 4 final in 3.5. There's some improvements to the dashboard interface. Frankly, finishing the work that was done in 3.3 and actually making it really good. And... Um, Here's some examples of the GDPR stuff. So, oh, sorry, that's like you can make your own policy documents in Moodle. Uh, this is the bottom, the bottom of a web page, and you can see it shows policies that you might have to be aware of, just like when you see, you know, the site uses cookies, that kind of thing, but other stuff. Um, then you have to agree to policies, and when you do, they're, they're uh, stored. And uh, the users can contact the data protection officer for that institution and ask for their data back uh, or things like that. 
and the, in, the, in Moodle, there's tools for keeping track of those sort of requests and so on. Uh, Moodle Mobile 3.5, there is a new Ionic 3 framework which allows nicer interfaces. There's a new mechanism coming for non-core plugins, and this is a, a big one because it's okay for us to have core support, but a lot of people use the beautiful open source nature of Moodle to make their own plugins naturally, and all of those have to work on mobile too, so this is the, uh, a big thing. Some of the interfaces look uh, are going to look pretty nice. These are, uh, this is roughly what the new interfaces look like in the, the Moodle mobile app. So you can see it's starting to look very modern, very satisfactory, I think. And going forward, this. <clears throat> We've decided to really get some focus on what we focus on by uh, focusing on what RFPs are asking for. These are, when a university goes out to tender, they, we need a new platform, and they put out a, a request for proposals. This stipulates all the checklist of things that they want to see. Moodle cannot fail on any of those checklist items. So even though some of them are a little boring, uh, we are committing ourselves for the next couple of releases to, to analyzing all of the RFPs from the coming out lately, make sure Moodle checks all the boxes. Yeah? Um, there's a bunch of stuff in those about usability, about standards of support, about integrations, about support across all devices, about Moodle being more active, i.e. analytics, but Moodle being a bit more uh, active uh, in the learning. So that gives you the idea of the flavor of them, but this analysis is what's going to drive the roadmap for the next couple of years, so we'll be publishing some of that soon. You'll see the roadmap documents coming out. Uh, there is a bunch of things about development this week. Uh, really, all of the big presentation sessions have some development ones or, or ones related to plugins people have built and case studies. Uh, so, <clears throat> all right, number six. Uh, and I should be finishing soon. We really want to improve the breadth and depth of Moodle services. So that means stronger support for our partners, our Moodle partners, who are a really key part of the Moodle environment, our integration partners, there's a couple here uh, that you'll see outside. Um, we're going to be improving Moodle Cloud, and we're going to be developing our ability to manage very large commercial projects. So <clears throat> these are the Moodle partners in the area, the UK and, and Ireland. Uh, these people are critical to the Moodle project, and they always have been, all the developers and development gets funded by them mostly. Uh, they, are, they spend their whole lives breathing Moodle and thinking about Moodle in different contexts. So we, we uh, work with them and we're going to be working even closer with them in the future um, on helping people access services through them. Moodle Cloud is our hosting uh, setup. We have about 25, over 25,000 Moodle sites currently on that system. <clears throat> um, they've been doing a lot of work on making that system GDPR compliant. Um, as of today, this is an announcement, we've removed the ads off the free sites. I never liked them anyway, never wanted them. Uh, so we got Google off out of there, uh, which is a good thing. Has anybody got a free Moodle site? Here, yeah, some, Moodle Cloud. All right, when you go there, no ads. Uh, in the near future, we're working on some more sector-specific packages and more integrations with other SaaS systems on there um, to, to flesh it out. Now, number seven, <clears throat> this is a dirty word in an open source project, sell. But it shouldn't be um, because a lot of people don't even know what's going on in our project. Um, we spend some time doing some uh, brand marketing, you know, we've got social media and things like that. It's mostly talking to the people who are following us, so they're mostly people who know us already. Um, we come to Moodle Moots, you come to Moodle Moots, you already know what Moodle is. Um, we don't really go out there. We don't go out to other places telling people what Moodle is, so we're not out in the field. Um, we're not really 
marketing our products like we could be or there's different products we can make out of Moodle. We're not really showing people how to use Moodle um, in a good way. So we're going to be a lot more active. You'll see us out there a lot more at conferences like Learning Technologies or BET, uh, EduCores in the US, uh, EduTech in Asia Pacific, etc. You'll see, start seeing more Moodle signs, orange booths with orange logos so that people don't walk into these places and go, oh, I see that company and that company. Where's Moodle? Oh, they must have dropped off the planet. Um, so we're just going to be more out there. I'm also going to a lot more conferences that are nothing to do with Moodle, uh, like IEEE conferences where there's 70% of them are researchers who use Moodle. Uh, or like that conference in Israel, for example, or, you know, just getting out of the Moodle bubble verse and out there into the rest of the world. So uh, we're doing a lot of that. Um, also, uh, integrations with products online. This is how Silicon Valley works. I went to a conference last year. It's 10,000 software company CEOs in one room. Every single icon, logo on this thing, they're all there. And I could see they're all leveraging off each other, all of them. They're all got integrations to, you know, you're in this thing and you can go to that thing or you can share over to that thing, you can get another one of those things. They're all connected. And we're not really in that universe. And I don't really want to be a Silicon Valley company if that wasn't clear. But if you're on Salesforce and you're using Salesforce for your CRM or something, and you think, hey, I need some sort of education for my growing company, and you go into their marketplace, there should be a Moodle logo in there. And then you find Moodle. Um, etc. Those kinds of things are things we need to be doing. So we're, we're building up the teams to do these kinds of things internally. All of this is about achieving sustainability at a higher level. This project is not going to be relying on outside money um, as a present. It's got to be, we have to get this whole project to a place where we can have 100, 200, 300 developers building the world's best education software and that the whole ecosystem is funding it. It's important for things in this world to be sustainable. Unlike a lot of like, research projects, I would say, although people would look at that as, you know, where you move on to the next research project and the next research project and the next one. We don't have that luxury. We, uh, we want to be sustainable uh, and solid uh, all the way through. So that's our eight goals. Anything that doesn't fit in those things uh, is we're, we're not doing, and uh, we're trying to stay very focused in here. So we're busy. Goodness, how can I help, I hear you ask. Uh, look, get a branded Moodle mobile app. It's a total non-brainer. It really is a uh, very simple, a very, very simple uh, thing to do, except uh, if you have some third-party plugins that you've written yourself, it may not be an easy decision, in which case Juan will tell you all about how that will soon not be a problem. Um, join the Moodle Users Association. Um, there's a presentation this afternoon, I believe, at 5.30, 5 or 5.30. Who's running that, actually? Is someone here? I'm not sure. Anyway, we'll all be together. Uh, anybody's welcome to come to that, stuff, by the way. It's a meeting of the association, but it's also anybody's welcome. Uh, if you're using Moodle for research, well, use Moodle or promote Moodle. Um, it's really the best way to do research into online learning because of the amount of data you can, you can gather uh, from yourself and around the world. There is a website, research.moodle.net, where we're collecting papers and information, uh, and that'll lead you to other things. If you're involved in grant funding for Moodle-related projects, just give us a call, drop us a line. Uh, we may not be, have the resources to really fully engage just yet, but like, at least give us a shot, let us know about it. Um, maybe we can help you get some of that stuff into core. Use Moodle Cloud, you, it's there for you, we made it for you. Uh, if you need consulting, please use Moodle Partners. Moodle Partners pay 10% of their revenues to us. Uh, and that's, that's what drives a lot of our sustainability. If any of that hit home, if any of that's interesting, just talk to me, talk to anyone else here, uh, reach out, you know, that's, what we, that's why we're all here in the same place. We've all traveled here, let's make the most of it. 
Um, and maybe if you're thinking of, of ditching your crummy job, um, uh, give us a call. Look on our site. We've actually got a lot of hiring going on. Uh, and uh, I would much prefer to have people we know who've been around in Moodle for a long time um, uh, and who believe in the mission. Lastly, I just want to say, in general, supporting open practices is one way to support the UN Sustainability Goals, I believe, and all sorts of open things. That open practices are things that are bigger than a government, bigger than a company. Things that are open are things that work, and we often forget how many open things are out there that are actually making it all work, right? Email. Email is, a, is the best social media platform ever invented. Uh, HTTP, the web, nobody controls that. Look what happened when that got out, out of the box. Uh, Unix is an operating system, you know, led to Linux, led to Mac OS X, led to even to uh, some versions of Windows. Uh, Android, is Linux, but all this stuff, it's all Linux and Unix in there. Um, that's open software, that's how it works. It just gets out there, right, and it makes stuff happen. And lastly, I just want to say this is, what I think, what we're all aiming for. So let's all kind of try and make sure that's what we're doing uh, because it's the next generation that's, that's really going to... Um, uh, leads to the generation after that and the generation after that and we hope there's many of those right so thank you very much and uh, I hope uh, we all have a terrific three days I'm really looking forward to being with you uh, talk to me talk to anyone enjoy your time uh, and uh, thank you very very much <laughs>